The latest rumours have shown what is assumed to be the 15.5 inch MacBook Air with the same screen resolution as the 14 inch MacBook Pro running an M2 chip appearing in developers logs. So have I been wrong about this M3 all the time? Is it not coming at WWDC? Not so fast. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. Even though we've had Mark German's predictions for WWDC over the weekend, here is what he's saying and here's why I don't think it's right. In the newsletter he said, this is what he's expecting. The reality headset, the first new major Apple product category in nearly a decade. A new XROS operating system and the software development kit, new MacBooks, iOS 17, iPad OS 17, Mac OS 14, and major Watch OS 10 updates. But then he caveats, the models coming in June probably won't boast major new M3 chips. Instead, they'll run with something in line with the current M2 processors. So what is going on here? I personally think he's wrong, and I'll tell you why. We know that TSMC started producing three nanometer wafers in December of 2022. We also know that Apple has bought all of it, all of the three nanometer chips that they can make for a year. They are not f***ing around here. Are we saying that all of those chips since December have been for an iPhone that isn't releasing until September? And even if it is, only half of that iPhone lineup is going to be using it anyway, because the base iPhones use last year's chips now, which are made on a different process. They're on five nanometers. Does it not make sense that some of these are M3 chips? And anyway, those developer logs that we heard about seeing the 15.5 inch displays running on an M2 chip, I would say it's probably not impossible that somewhere in Apple Park, they've got internal development devices that are using MacBook Air M2 boards to test the displays ahead of final production and assembly. It might also be that Apple has ways of disguising the M3 so that it would appear in a developer log as, I don't know, just to avoid super early leaks, perhaps? We've got a couple of months yet until these things are actually gonna be properly produced and ready to go. The question that I would ask is this, would you buy a 15 and a half inch M2 MacBook Air a year after the smaller version came out with basically the same design, but just a bit bigger and exactly the same chip? Assuming that Vadim from Max Tech is right and the update cycle for the M chips is 18 months, which I don't think he is, I don't think that is the case, but myself and Vadim talk about this all all the time on Twitter, it gets quite entertaining. You would be buying a device which six months from your purchase of the device on its launch day is last generation. There is zero chance that Apple is gonna update the 13 inch Air in six months and not the 15 inch in six months. They would never do that. They'd never do it with the 14 inch Pro and the 16 inch Pro later. So why would they do it with the Air? It doesn't make any sense. Can you imagine the backlash that Apple would get from the M2 15 inch MacBook Air owners? It doesn't make sense. Mark goes on to say as well that he expects the new 24 inch iMac, the Mac Pro 13 inch Air, and for some reason a refreshed 13 inch MacBook Pro by the end of the year. And he said unequivocally that the iMac in the past will not be updated with M2, it's gonna be M3. So what else is gonna be going into the 13 inch Air and the needless 13 inch MacBook Pro if not M3? So why do it and have an old 15 inch MacBook Air knocking around? It doesn't make any sense, guys. And he's definitely saying that there are laptops coming at WWDC, but with something like an M2 in it. But what laptops are we missing? Now, I don't believe for a second that an M2 powered 15 inch MacBook Air will ever go on sale. I believe that they've tested the displays with the M2 board, but this makes no sense otherwise. How I just lost my mind. Is this me? Am I the one that's in the wrong here? Let me know in the comments. And anyway, we've got Notification Squad to do. B-Z-Z-E-R-C, I don't know how I'm supposed to say that otherwise, has clicked uh, subscribe and the notification bell and hashtag Notification Squad down in the comment section, which is exactly what you're supposed to do when you do it. And then you can get a shout out in the next one too. But let's get into your questions. And B-Z-Z-E-R-C has also asked, will we see the new M3 24 inch iMac at WWDC? Based on what we've just heard from Mark Gurman, he doesn't think that M3 is going to be there. I do, and I think it would make sense. I don't think they need to do a big hoo-ha about it once they've talked about M3. 
but you know it's a 24 inch iMac it's not been updated since it first came out with M1 so it'd be great if we did I think that might be one that waits till the fall but I could see it coming at dub dub there'd be very little in the supply chain that would tell us this anyway because it's going to look the same it's going to have the same panel it's going to be the same shape uh, it's just going to be a different board in it Eugene King asks IK Vances has Apple solved the scaling problem with the ultra chips I'm referencing a floor that keeps ultras from being twice as powerful as the max chips uh, this is a tricky one it's it's very difficult it tends to be about 30 percent faster whereas it should be like a hundred percent faster i don't know what the issue is i don't know if it's like throughput between the chips if it's just you know allocating enough tasks to that number of cores and that is probably the issue it's probably that the cores are underutilized now if apple does go to m3 and skips over m2 for the ultras then we might have a bit more luck because they're going to be a lot cooler because they're on a smaller process node they're going to use less power therefore they're not going to have to disperse as much energy um so fingers crossed but we've heard nothing about it evan rogers asks i gave answers when do you think apple will release an apple tv 8k now i don't know if it's going to happen um how many 8k tvs are there even on the planet um i'm i'm probably going to say under a million an 8k apple tv the the amount of bandwidth you need to stream to it insane whether we're actually going to need it or not still not clear because maybe ar or vr it might take over that space maybe we'll just pop on a headset we don't need to take up an entire wall of our homes anymore in order to watch something on tv i don't know uh, but i don't think apple has any plans for it right now even getting signal from an apple tv box to an 8k tv that's not a, a trivial task, especially if you want high frame rates too. Evan Rogers asks, IK Vances, what are your thoughts on a touch screen on AirPods? AirPods Touch. So yes, we have actually seen some patents that Apple has put out for potentially a media player on the outside of the AirPods um, case. I don't think that this is a thing that would have internal storage, maybe, and maybe a small amount, the same as you'd have on like an Apple Watch. Uh, but the idea would be that you could like pull your AirPods out of your pocket and change the track on there. I don't know if it's something that they need to do or if they're just patenting it to avoid someone else coming out with something very similar. Uh, but it kind of looks like the size of the old iPod Nano screen. Uh, doesn't look particularly useful. They're not going to have their own connection to the internet, as far as I know, uh, unless they put Wi-Fi into the cases, maybe. Maybe you could stream Wi-Fi to the case and then the case encodes it and sends high bitrate audio to the AirPods. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure on this. Uh, I don't think it's going to come anytime soon, though. Tim Kinetics asks, IK Vances, how many more generations of the iPhone do you think we'll have before the technology moves away from thin, flat slabs of glass? And what might come next? Tiny, powerful feature phones with a virtual screen on a headset or maybe something wacky that we can't even imagine yet. I don't think we're going to be moving away from iPhones and, and, and the phone form factor anytime soon. Uh, we've had tablets and phones that could replace laptops for many years and yet we have laptops still uh, i think we've got at least a decade before we even move away from laptops so uh, yeah we've got a lot still to come it's not a case of the technology being able to take people away from it as much as people wanting to move from one device to another AR VR headsets still not going to be mainstream at least for a few years even after Apple comes into the market so I think we're, we're safe with our phones we're safe with our laptops we're safe with our desktops for now desktops are certainly declining people are moving more to mobile computing laptops will decline as people move over to tablets my kids probably don't really use a keyboard that much they're quite happy with using a virtual one I know people like me like to have a physical keyboard so they've got time and thank you for watching guys don't forget if you've got a question hashtag I gave answers down in the comment section if you want to join the notification squad use that hashtag when you've rung the bell and thank you to the patreons we will see you in the next one want the latest apple news leaks and rumors subscribe and ring the bell